We are working on line integrals of function type. In the previous video, we found the length of the curve C, where C was defined parametrically with the vector 3 cosine of t, 3 sine of t, 4t, t from 0 to 2 pi. Now we're working on problem 2 here. We're to find the line integral of the function f of x, y, z equal to 1 over x squared plus y squared plus z squared over the curve C. Remember that we said the keywords line integral of function type is length, arc length, line integral of a function, not of a vector function, just a regular function, those things. And one of the things we use line integrals of function type for is to find the length of the curve C. And the second thing is what we're doing here, which is kind of like calculating the weight of the curve C. We're going to be thinking of C as a piece of curved wire. And then we want to think of F as like a density function. So it's the density of the wire at each point of C, but the density can change according to the position of the point. This is not a perfect analogy because the function can actually be negative, whereas density is always positive. This R function here is positive. But it's a pretty good analogy. And the idea is that the line integral will be summing f times ds. And that would be the density times the length. And that gives us the weight of the wire. So I tend to think of line integrals of function type as either giving me the length of the wire with f uniformly 1 everywhere, or it gives me a weight of the wire as the density function changes according to the position of the wire in the plane or in space. So what is the symbol we use for this? We use i equals the integral over the curve of f times ds. And again, remember that the length of the curve just means you take f equal to 1. This is a bunch of letters. We can't really use that. We need to get it down to t. And our idea is to get it to this formula here, which we know how to do. The integral from t1 to t2 of f of t, and this is all t, and this is t. So we can, we can integrate that. So our problem here is to figure out how to get from this gobbledygook to what we know how to do. We've got everything done in the previous problem except f of t. We had our parameterization of the curve. We have an interval. That was this part up here, right? So that gives us t1 to t2. We found the derivative vector by taking the derivatives of each component with respect to t. And then we found the magnitude of that vector, right? By taking the square root of the sum of the derivative squared. And in our case, we had that ds was equal to a constant function here, 5 dt. Can be a function, doesn't have to be constant. Now, that gives us the interval. It gives us this part here, but we need to find f of t. How do we find f of t? The idea is that f is a function of x, y, z. This is the x component of s, the y component, and the z component. We substitute this for x, this for y, and this for z. So what we are doing is substituting the corresponding components of the curve, of the vector parametrization of the curve into f to get f of t. Let's see what that means here. f is a function of x, y, z. Here it is, 1 over x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So we're just copying from our function here. That's equal to 1 over, and now x squared is 3 cosine t squared, so 9 cosine squared of t. And then y squared, not the derivatives, the, the curve itself, 9 sine squared of t and then plus 16t squared. Let me repeat that again. You put the, the curve components in, not the derivative components. So this is now 1 over, this is 9, plus 16t squared. 
a. That's a function of t. So now we have everything in t ready to figure out the line integral of this function over c. So what do we get? We get i equals, we need to go from t1 to t2, so 0 to 2 pi. We need f of t, which is 1 over 9 plus 16 t squared. And then we need times 5 dt. And this is equal to 5 twelfths arctan or inverse tangent of 4t over 3 from 0 to 2 pi, which is 5 twelfths a tan of 8 pi over 3, which is approximately equal to 0, 6, 0. So, when you work this out, the answer to find the line integral of this function here over c gives us approximately 0, 6. This is actually pretty interesting to look at what it means. So we're going to go do that now. So here we are in Sage Notebook solving our second problem. And down here, we're, we input our vector parameterization of the curve just as above. We input our interval from 0 to 2 pi here. And now we're putting in the function before we had 1 because we had arc length. And now we're putting in our function 1 over the sum of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. Now, I call this function the black hole function. Why do I call it the black hole function? Because at the point 0, 0, 0, this function goes to infinity. So it, its density at 0, 0, 0 is infinite. So I call it the black hole function because at 0, 0, 0, in, it has infinite value. And then as you get farther and farther out from 0, 0, 0, the density drops very fast. The rest is the standard stuff. We use the program to find the vector derivative. We use the program to find the magnitude of the vector derivative. We use the program to do the change of variables. Why should we risk that? Always remember that Sage counts the components with a number one less. So the zero component is actually the first component. The first component is the second one. The second one is the third, etc. So here we can see the one over 16 t squared plus nine that we got for f of t. Now. Look at this integrand just for a minute because we're going to be getting to more difficult stuff. This is just regular multiplication. It's a function of t times another function of t, that, that magnitude. So it's just the normal product of two functions. Then we integrate that from 0 to 2 pi, like we said, the 0 0.60 fancer. And when we calculated it by hand, we saw that it's the same answer. Okay, so what is the point? This is kind of what we are doing. Here is our curve. And what we are doing is, just for fun, adding how much density we have from f at each point. And we said, as you get closer to 0, 0, 0, there's infinite density there. This is the point closest, so it has the most density. And then as we get farther and farther away from 0, 0, 0, the density decreases. Now this density has been multiplied by 10 so that we can see it here. And the idea is that the weight of the wire would be this density times the length. So we're adding up this kind of like area, but of course it's not area and it's not even weight. But the idea is that you say how much F you have at each point on the curve. You add up that F times the length of the curve times the ds to get the line integral. That's the idea.